I spent my formative years in Sri Lanka. I lived there till I was 18. After which we came back to our roots in India. I say roots because uh, my ancestors uh, went to um, Sri Lanka uh, from drought ridden parts of South India to work on the tea plantations when the British started establishing the tea plantations. I'm like an upcountry girl. My grandparents worked in the tea industry basically. Colombo of course is a lovely gracious um, at least when I was growing up, a city with lots of colonial charm. It was a small town still though, it was a capital city. People had lots of time for each other. The whole social interaction, as I remember it, was around food. And the Sri Lankan festive table, it's nothing like people do now, like a biryani and raita called Swiggy. It was a spread. And I grew up seeing my mother, uh, almost single-handedly, she had some help at home putting out this piece and we would wait for those, we would wait for the next day to eat the leftovers. When we came back to India, our cooking acquired some stronger Indian influences. Uh, but I feel instinctively, if you give me a basket of ingredients, I, uh, my instinct would be to cook Sri Lankan. I would think of how I can spice it, how I can put the coconut milk in, what sort of good coconut oil I can use. Sri Lankan food is not, it's just like India, is not one homogeneous thing. It's a tiny country, but there are many, many variations. To broadly, there's the Sinhala cooking, there's the Tamil cooking, but Tamil cooking varies between the Jaffna cooking, which is in the north, and the hill country cooking. Sinhala cuisine also varies between high country, which is considered uh, Arkandian cooking, which is uh, has a few regal royal connections. Uh, I think if you had a caste system, they would be at the top of the rung. Malay cooking from the Malay traders who came there where you get uh, beautiful, uh, again, uh, sweet and sour pickles, uh, ways of cooking uh, what they call a biryani, which is the biryani, with small grain rice, a lot of mint. To me, Sri Lankan cuisine, uh, the Sinhala cuisine, and also the Jaffna cuisine, is very based on Ayurvedic principles. And you will see no less than 12 types of greens, like from pennywort to morning glory, lotus stem, there's a different other stem called koila which is supposed to cool the system, it's very seasonal, lots of medicinal things that are good for digestion, things that can bring your sugar levels down. Sri Lanka is of course known as the spice island, known for its spices and its fabulous quality of spices. Uh, one of the gripes I have when I cook here is when I ask for cinnamon and uh, handed cassia bark bringing up cinnamon trees and peeling them itself is considered an art there. So it's thin, it's paper-like, you know, and you can crush it with your hands, so that's the cinnamon. Uh, the pepper is intense and beautiful as well. The cloves are good, the cardamom is top quality. When I cook in India, Sri Lankan food, I feel that pang a little bit, that the ingredients aren't as great as they are there. The coconut's sweet tastes much sweeter, the brinjols are nicer, beans are more tender. The Sri Lankan fish curry is an everyday dish uh, in most homes, eaten with rice, rice is the staple. You can use any kind of fish, I personally prefer the small fish which are like mackerel and sardines, unglamorous but packed with flavour but it's a very simple way of uh, you know small tempering onion ginger garlic a little bit of curry leaf a good Sri Lankan chilli powder and there's a little curry powder which is my mother's recipe which I use um, has coriander and a mix of spices it goes into curry little tamarind put in the fish finish it with coconut milk it's as simple as that another festive dish uh, which goes along with uh, yellow rice and the rich chicken curry is a curried pineapple. Pineapple is used in the cooking as well. We make a curried pineapple. Uh, a pineapple salad will often be a bite for drinks. It's a simple thing of cooking the pineapple with a bit of cinnamon stick, um, dash of mustard, finishing it with a little uh, aniseed powder uh, and a little chilli powder, coconut milk. Sambals, which again complement rice and curry meal. Uh, we can make sambals with a uh, fair number of vegetables, uh, lady's finger, brinjols or bitter gourd. The principle is simple, you just slice them as thin as possible, deep fry them to a crisp, toss them with julienne, the onion, tomato, a uh, bit of lime juice. You can finish it with coconut, great, freshly grated coconut or coconut milk. To 
invited to a Sri Lankan home for a meal, uh, chances are you will be served watlapam for dinner. It's of Malay origin, coconut milk, the kitul jaggery as we call it, comes from a palm tree and eggs beaten together, strained, flavoured again, with, scented with the cardamom and nutmeg again which the island is known for, steamed gently and maybe you can top it with some cashew nuts, it's beautiful, creamy. Even now though, as a food writer and critic, I eat in many restaurants and enjoy many cuisines. It's uh, Sri Lankan and South Indian, uh, Indian and South Indian specifically, which is very close to my heart. And I feel those cuisines need to be celebrated, promoted. This of course, what I'm doing, the food festivals, is just a way of um, indulging my own joy in cooking for people and you know, uh, seeing them happy eating that food.